We're uh, joined um, back. We're joined by Giants bench coach Ron Lotus. And Ron, I mean, we we're talking about the 13 years, but in reality, you've been with the team 20 years. So when you were hired and, uh, and towards the end of your career in the minor leagues, so you played in Phoenix, I think, late 80s. Yeah, exactly. I um, I first came to the Giant organization in 1988. I was uh, still playing AAA. I was released by the Royals out of spring training. I sat on a month joined the Phoenix Firebirds uh, in May of 1988. Right, and uh, the interesting thing is because we played a little bit with, with the Pirates in the early 80s, now, what's that like? Because you must have been like 28, 29 years old. You have your whole career ahead of you, and then you uh, probably injuries. I think your first job was, what, was in Clinton. You uh, took a coaching job, and you just worked your way up. Right, exactly. Well, I played for 11 years, parts of three years with the Pirates. I had an arm injury that uh, uh, really devastated me a little bit. I never was able to throw from short again. So I, I knew that my uh, chances to get back to the big leagues were limited. I played a couple more years and decided to change careers and uh, join the Giants in a coaching capacity. My first year uh, was uh, in Clinton, Iowa. I, I coached for Jack Mull. Some people may remember him. And then I started managing. I managed the next seven years, uh, two in San Jose, three in Shreveport, Louisiana, and at the time my AAA club was in Phoenix before the Diamondbacks came into now. Now they're in Fresno, so I managed two years in Phoenix. That's like a meant for you. That's actually uh, that's where the best thing the Diamondbacks started. That led to you becoming, I think it was your the third base coach about 1998, and uh, you've been up here ever since. I, I just thought about a good question. You're like, I mean, I mean, we're here 20 years later, but I mean, you didn't just arrive here. I mean, it took putting in Iowa and going to the minor league, California league, or what was Shreveport, the Southern League? Or, uh, uh, Texas League. Texas, Texas League. You put like Huntsville, and, yeah, exactly. And then, and then so I mean, also our connection with you, it's thanks to your wife, you've been, you, you live in Pleasant Hill. I mean, most of these guys live up in the Peninsula. Sure. And, and uh, talk about that. Uh, I just, it, they should honor you in Pleasant Hill. I think the slogan should be, you know, could they pull down the dome? They said, right. come, come, come to Pleasant Hill, we no longer have a dome, but we have two-time World Series champion Ron Royce. Oh. Would, you go, would you go for that? Uh, Ryan, I don't know. That's, that's that's pretty impressive. I don't know if I, I can compete with the dome. The dome was pretty special. It was, yeah. yeah but uh, no, I um, I married uh, Lori, uh, who grew up in Martinez, went to Alhambra High School, and we met in Hawaii when I was playing AAA. She was living there, and uh, we lived in Pleasant Hill. We've been living in Pleasant Hill since then. So uh, um, I've had a few places in Pleasant Hill. We love it. Uh, it's close to Lori's family. And, um, you know, I like the East Bay. It's, it's a fantastic place to live. What you feel about if you keep having you on local TV, you might not be able to walk into Virginia Hill Safeway and buy, like, a loaf of bread without people asking you for an autograph. I mean, uh, <laughs> would that be all right? Well, that, that would be fine. Yeah. You know, it, it's not too bad. I'm behind the scenes, which is good as a bench coach. Not like Flan. If I was out coaching third, it'd be a lot worse. Yeah. But, uh, no, you know, uh, you, you know where I shop. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. So, uh, no, it's all good. Right? We love Pleasant Hill, and it's a nice, easy commute to get here. And I'm very, very lucky to be able to be here with the Giants as long as I have. Yeah, exactly. And also, just talking about people working in the office, what I find interesting about you, I, were you hired by, uh, was it Roger Craig and uh, 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 who's that, the, the guy from the Indians, Al Rosen? Was that was he? Al Rosen, well, who actually, the, the person that actually hired me was Carlos Alfonso. He was head of the minor league development at the time, and uh, him and Jack Hyatt. Jack Hyatt is just kind of uh, retired for us, but has been in the minor leagues for years. And Carlos Alfonso was head of the minor leagues. He's the one that signed me to a AAA contract to play for the Phoenix Firebirds in 88 and 89. And then in 1990, offered me a coaching position with the Giants. He's, he's long since gone. He works for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. He's, he's in charge of their uh, Latin America operations. Uh, but he's still in the game. But that's how I got to start with my Giants. And as you said, Roger Craig was the manager at that time. Al Rosen was the general manager. Exactly. Bob Lurie, were your checks signed by Bob Lurie? Was that you? They were signed by Bob Lurie. And I'd like to tell you a story about Bob Lurie. What, what a great man he was. You know, he owned a team. Of course, I had never met him. I was working in the minor leagues when he sold the club, and I can't recall the exact year, but 93, when he sold the club, I had been managing in the minor leagues for four years at that point, 
and he, uh, when he sold the club, I got a small check one winter from the sale of the club, thanking me for my services. And I never met Bob Corey, but he spread the wealth to everybody in the organization and thanked everybody uh, with a letter and a check, which was nice, because when you're in the minor leagues, you're not making too much. And what a class individual he is. Because you get here, and this is the pinnacle, but you go through the California League, probably bus trips to play like the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes or the Bakersfield Blaze or something like that. And you know, did you ever think 20 years later you'd make it to the Bigs, but then you'd be sitting talking to me on local TV and on Pleasant Hill Martins? Well, I, I, you know, no, not really. You know, I should because Lori knows everybody in Pleasant Hill and Martinez. Of course, she grew up there. And I joke when I come home in the winter, I mean, we go places and and she knows everybody in the community, and I'm, I'm only there half the time, and, and so I get to meet some new friends uh, all, the, all the time when I go when I go out with my wife. Absolutely, and I was thinking, but just like, like when you look at like administrations change, but you, you're always here. Like you, I think your first, uh, there was Dusty Baker, right. and then you worked for him, Dusty left, a few, a few new coaches came, you stayed, right. and then it was uh, Felipe Alou, and uh, now it's Bruce Mochi. So people, tell us your secret for, working for three different bosses. I mean, that's, I mean, people can transfer that that are working at Plus Del Martinez. How do I stay on the same job for 13 years with uh, different managers? Well, I don't know what the secret is, but I will say, you know, I, I uh, you know, when I grew up, my dad worked in a factory his whole life. And, you know, one thing uh, about my dad is he always gave an honest day's work, and if he was going to do something, he did it to his best of ability. You like to think that, uh, you know, I give the Giants for money's worth. Um, I show up every day and do the best I can. And you know, really, it's a credit to Brian Sabian that I've been here this long. Brian Sabian has been the general manager since I came on board in 1998. And we've had three managerial changes, as you said. And, uh, you know, those managers, if they really wanted their own bench coach, they, they probably could have bought some men. But Brian um, definitely wanted to keep me around and uh, put me in contact with both Felipe Alou and Bruce Bochy to discuss with them if, if they would uh, keep me on board. So I thank those two gentlemen as well, but really Brian Sagan is, is the reason that uh, I'm still a San Francisco Giant. Yeah, and then I was going to mention, you know, the Giants have been here 50 years, and not, not until you showed up. Yeah, well, actually, I'll ask you this. How many parades down Market Street did they have before you joined the organization? <laughs> well... Um, it's a trick question. It's a trick question. I know we've had two since I've joined. But yeah. There, but there was one. There was one with Billy Mays. It's well documented that one time. Yeah, exactly. When they came to town. Right. In, exactly. Right. 1958. Right. So, yeah. That was a trick question because uh, I remember him talking about Willie Mays. I know he never won the world yeah. championship, but I remember them going down Market Street. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for refreshing my memory. Yeah, right. That's when they came to San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, but you. What, 2010, 2012? Yeah. Well, the hat, I mean, it had been since 54 in New York, and now you come down Market Street, it seems like every other year. I mean, that's, I don't know what the question is, that's a good thing, I think. Well, it's, look, look we, you know, I've been here a long time, and, and we've had, uh, we've had our ups and downs, you know, the team. Uh, we had some lean years there for about four or five years, but now, now we were able to bounce back, and uh, we're in the thick of it. And you know, to win the World Series one time is is, uh, is is something that every coach, player, manager wants to do. But to be able to win twice, two out of three years, it's really special. And you know, it's a tribute to the players and the way we played. I mean, we didn't dominate either of those years, but the guys performed and played. Uh, when, when it counted, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll do the same thing this year. Yeah, almost unexpected. I mean, you, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, both years you were like had to come from behind in several of those series, uh, particularly against St. Louis uh, last year, even in 2010. I mean, you down two one to Atlanta. I can't remember. Or, or, I'm not sure if it was down two. It was a game five. Yeah. I can't remember how it started. Right, yeah. Exactly. And then I was just trying to think. You know, just uh, look here and see if there's anything that I missed. Um, Oh, this is kind of funny. I mean, you're a good guy. The one that research I did, I watched. There was a game where uh, somehow you're arguing balls and strikes, and I guess that's like me going to traffic court. You uh, you can't. You know, it's like giving a speeding ticket. And no, but it's funny. You didn't even know. I think you were ejected until Bruce Bochy told you. And I and I think you know you don't want to argue, but if you just get ejected once or twice a year, I think that's the right thing to go out there and get your money's worth. Let the the umpire know. Is that correct? Well, you know, that's not my job. You know, Bruce, Bruce is the manager. Yeah. My job isn't to harass the umpires, but there's times that uh, obviously you have to let them know. You know, when they're when they're doing poorly. But I, I don't want I don't want to uh, you know I don't want to impact the game as well. It's up to the manager. But 
once he did throw me out of the game, uh, which was unjust in my opinion, because you know he, he said that was enough. I kept my mouth shut. And then he decided to throw me out. So um, yeah, I felt uh, I, mean, I was going to go. I was going to go tell him. And, uh, unfortunately, you have to serve a suspension. Yeah, and I served the one game suspension. Yeah, um, you know, so you don't want to do that. But if you know, if I was in the wrong, I, I definitely would have went out there. But I felt that he was in the wrong, and I says, you know what, I'm going to go talk to him. I think you just questioned it. And uh, yeah, no, no, I found that interesting. I think all this coach, you didn't know you were objecting. Coach, you said, well, I think you're kicked out and you're all there and you your case. Well, I knew I was objecting. Oh, okay. I knew I was objecting. Yeah. I was going. I was going regardless of yeah. the coach said or anything. Right. But, uh, um, yeah, that was uh, that was a couple of years ago. Hopefully that won't happen again. We'll stay in the games here. That was like the last time. Maybe there wasn't even a time before. I don't know. I mean, you're not like Billy, not Billy Martin. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, those days are gone, right? The Billy Martins and Euro Weavers. Yeah. And you, don't, you don't see as much as that today with, right. with the managers. Yeah. You know, a little more in control. Yeah. I'll let you uh, get into this. It's sort of a long term. let you get in there. You should get you easily get your future pirate teammates in the late 80s, the early 80s. Because I remember going to games at Candlestick, and you, you, you probably never have, did you ever, you always probably go through the players' entrance, did you ever see the huge escalators outside? Anyway, their escalator almost looked like they would go up to the heavens. Yes. So they had nine or 10 years old to be riding, it seemed like for about 15 minutes, but it, it, really, it was really about two. But it, so it looks like you're going to heaven, but when you get inside, things have changed. We have you guys like uh, on our team, like uh, Larry Hurd and Terry Whitfield, but the, it seemed like my dad always took me to play the Pirates. And Omar Moreno was speeding around the bases. Dave Parker and hitting home runs. And John Candelari, I don't think, I mean, they, he beat the Giants every time I went. Yeah. And uh, so you played with him a little. Uh, uh, why was it that he tormented a, a, a little nine-year-old kid? But, uh, <laughs> well, I tell you, I, you know, I, I know those escalators you're talking yeah. about, a candlestick. I mean, because I've, I've gone to 49er games yeah. over the years. And, you know, of course, it's the same deal. But, you know, back to the Pirates, those are the guys that I played with. It was John Candelaria and uh, Dave Parker and Johnny Ray, Tony Pena, yeah. uh, to name a few of the yeah. guys. And, you know, they had some good years there, you know, back in 79. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the we, we Are, are family. family. Yeah. yeah. That's actually when I was drafted. Yeah. And I remember watching that World Series from the Instructional League in Bradenton, Florida, right. at our facility. Uh, Instructional League is like a winter league. Sure. You, play, you play October and yeah. November right. um, to, to further your development. And it was a great time to be drafted by the Pirates yeah. and then to watch the World Series your yeah. first year yeah. in the Instructional League yeah. and watch them win yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, so that's how we'll wrap up. So, 79, you're drafted by the World Champions. And now, that's what that means, two years ago, two times, I'll uh, end like this uh, actual life war, you know, uh, Pleasant Hill resident, two-time World Series champion, and yeah, like I said, we're only still be able to like walk the track in DVC, uh, be able to like uh, go to Virginia Hills. But uh, no, uh, I joke. Uh, but it's I just uh, I enjoy. I, I don't know why. I look forward. I mean, I'm like a kid today, you know, to come out here, watch batting practice, talk to you. Every day is a good day, Ron. But today is just a better day. So uh, I thank you. I appreciate that, Brian. It's been a pleasure being with you. You're exactly right. We're blessed to be out here playing baseball every day, and I'm, uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Yeah.